there's a preview I'd like to give you now for what's about to come, where we're going to start delving into the different types of industries and how that determines the way the industries behave in terms of output, pricing, and behavior to dominate a market or simply serve the market. The first example is perfectly competitive where no one company dominates. In fact, there are many firms with no ability to control the market as a whole. And therefore, the firms produce very similar products, like a commodity. And there's no real market power, such that the price is going to be equal to marginal costs. So there's very little economic profit, if you will, that is made by the firms. And the concentration ratios that we looked at, uh, for firm and HHI and Rothschild indices, are close to zero because there's not any dominance whatsoever in perfect competition. The second is monopoly. That's the exact opposite where there's one dominant player and the sole provider of goods or services can have a lot of power. Therefore, the price in this case is not equal to the marginal cost. It's greater than the marginal cost because they can do so. They could dominate the market and therefore set the price. And here we'll see on the other hand, uh, the high concentration ratios in both four firm and HHI, and also Rothschild indices equal to one. Then we have monopolistic competition, which is somewhere in the middle, where we have many firms and they compete with each other. However, they each have differentiated products. It's not a commodity. So they have some degree of control over the demand and the pricing for their products. But they have limited market power because it is very easy to enter and duplicate and copy. And so this leads to a very dynamic set of com competition. Frankly, a lot of competition we see in our industry today is monopolistic competition. And concentration uh, and Rothschild indices are close to zero because although you have somewhat differentiated products, in the end, it's not so differentiated that customers would greatly prefer yours over competitors. It's a mild preference, let's say. And the last item, which we'll devote a fair amount of time to after next chapter, is oligopolies, where a few large firms dominate the market. The classic example is OPEC and how they can set the price and agree on production standards to set the world price of oil. And the price and marketing strategy are now mutually interdependent between the firms in this industry. So this is a very unique case, and obviously OPEC and other cartels wield enormous power on their industries. So back to the headline that we saw earlier with AT&T and T-Mobile. I hope you know the answer now, that would somebody have been wise to raise their hand at AT&T and say, why are we doing this? You guys would, right, if you're part of the company. Why? Because if we did just one of the measures, let's say HHI, we would have seen that the HHI index here would have been over 2,500, which is the guideline for antitrust, and that the increase after the merger is more than 200 points. If at and is 32 and T-Mobile 10, and the rest of the industry calculates out to an HHI of 2,569 before, and they, you do it after the consolidation of those two competitors, and it jumps to 3,209, I'm pretty sure you would gain the attention of the Department of Justice, and this would be a hard case to press forward that is not anti-competitive. And so the CEO, the general counsel, and the board should all have known better. Maybe you should have been the CEO of AT&T. So learning objectives are industry measures in general, that we're going to be able to see and, and see the patterns what, of what leads to different types of industry practices. It could be the structure, the conduct, or performance. And those three comprise the holistic view using the feedback critique of how the industry relates to each other and the, the nature of the competition inside the industry. And finally, we had a brief preview of the major types of industry structures that we're going to be seeing over the next couple of chapters. All right. I'll see you in chapter eight.